welcome to the Extra Mile podcast for bar exam takers. There are no traffic jams along the Extra Mile when you're studying for your bar exam. And now, your host, Jackson Mummy, owner of the Celebration Bar Review. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 226 of the Extra Mile podcast for bar exam takers. This is your host, Jackson Mummy. Really glad to have you with us on this post-Thanksgiving episode. Hope everybody had a great holiday, wonderful, restful time with lots of food and family and refreshing fun. And now you're back to your bar studies. So there you go. Doesn't last long, does it? Um, We are glad to have you here with us. If this is your first time on the podcast, welcome. We come to you every week to talk about all things bar exam related. And we're at an interesting time in the bar exam season right now. We've just wrapped up the results from July 2018. Uh, The quick version or summary or recap of all of that is it was a train wreck, really, really bad, and finished up with the biggest disaster of all. The California results came out with the worst uh, reported pass rate in 65 years. So uh, 16% pass rate for repeat bar takers, only a 41% pass rate overall. Um, And if you want to know more about the California Bar Exam and the results, uh, check out my episode 225, last week's episode. Uh, I do a fairly deep dive on the numbers, but also talk about some things that I think need to change in order to fix what I call a broken system. So if you're a Cal Bar Taker, you might want to check that episode out. That was 225. Now, if you'd like to watch today's episode, I want to let you know that all of our podcasts are available in video and audio format. You can check out the video by going to celebrationbarreview.com slash 226. That's the episode number for today. And uh, you can see everything there and there are show notes as well. If you prefer to listen to your podcast, you can do that on Apple iTunes, on Spotify, iHeartRadio, a lot of places where podcasts are syndicated. And again, there's all the show notes uh, connected up with that. And then we have our archives of all of the podcast episodes going back to the very first episode. You can find those on our website. Just look for the podcast uh, tab at the top of the page. So lots of different places to get your podcast fix. In any event, uh, today I have one of the most special interviews probably that I've done in years and years and years. I suspect this will become something of an instant classic, uh, not because of me, but because of the person that we're going to be talking to. I'm going to be speaking with uh, a man who took the California bar exam for over 14 years. He started in 2004, passed in July 2018. He took the exam more than 20 times, and he passed after all of those years and all of those attempts. And it is a remarkable story from an absolutely remarkable man. And uh, I know you're going to want to stick around for that, regardless of what bar exam jurisdiction you're in. If you're feeling a little, you know, post Thanksgiving, uh, kind of down and in the dumps and, oh my God, I got to go back and study. Maybe you're a bar repeater. um, It's really tough to do that. And I think that this interview is going to inspire you uh, incredibly. Uh, It inspired me just talking to Glenn and I think you're going to really enjoy it. Now, before we jump into the interview with Glenn for today, I do want to let all of you know that we've got a very special live training opportunity coming up this Thursday night. It's November 29th at 7 p.m. Eastern. That would be 4 o'clock Pacific time. The training is titled Do Something Different make the next bar exam, your last bar exam. And during this training, we're going to look at the steps that successful bar takers follow in order to pass the bar. It's a step-by-step roadmap. We're going to go through each of those steps, show you what you've got to do, supplement it with case studies of successful students who've used each of those steps, and then we'll do a live Q&A at the end to answer any questions that you've got. Now, participation in this training is completely free, but you do need to register in advance, and you can do that in one of several ways. If you're here on the uh, video uh, podcast, just scroll to the uh, the show notes and you will see a link to uh, claim your free seat. Or you can do the same thing in the show notes for the audio. Or you can go to our website at celebrationbarreview.com slash webinar. So that's forward slash webinar and register there. Claim your seat for Thursday night, the 29th at 7 p.m. Eastern. Now, if that date and time do not work for you, we also offer an on-demand daily version of the same content. The only difference, of course, is that there's no live Q&A at the end, but you're invited to send your questions to me through the webinar, and I'll reply by email. So no matter how you get this uh, information, we think it's life-changing and important for you to participate. It's why we make it available for free, and we really want you to to join us. So hope you'll come out and uh, check it out. November 29th, 7 p.m. We've got a big crowd already registered, so I'm looking 
looking forward to a great uh, session and uh, lively Q&A at the end. So I hope you'll join us for that. Do something different. Make the next bar exam your last bar exam. Now, when it comes to doing something different, the story that you're about to hear, Glenn Winters, is a bit of an anomaly. Glenn came to us many years ago, and he uh, was having a lot of difficulty on the exam. He wasn't even close to a passing score uh, in the early years of his attempts. And after uh, a lot of work, one of the things that Glenn discovered, and you'll hear him talk about it in the interview, was that his uh, medical condition, a condition called amblyopia, which we know as lazy eye, uh, was actually more dangerous than any of us recognized. It was actually hurting his ability uh, to process information and to take the exam. And so one of the steps that Glenn took to do something different was to get accommodations from the bar examiners. And that was not an easy process, but he did it. And as he got those accommodations, his scores started to go up. But each time that Glenn uh, took the exam and fell short, he got a little closer to the top. And we continued to do something different for him each and every exam, trying to find the next piece that would fit into the puzzle for him to get him over the top. This was a very long, very difficult process. Glenn worked incredibly hard, and um, he was uh, an absolute gem of a student. He never lost his confidence. He never lost his uh, enthusiasm. Uh, it was There were times that were just bone-crushingly hard. As you'll hear, he came very close to passing several times and just couldn't quite get there. He got into second read but didn't get all the way over. When the California Bar changed its format and structure from a three-day test to a two-day test and switched from 50% or switched to 50% value on the multi-state instead of 30%, um, we felt like that was the time that Glenn had a real opportunity to push forward. And so Glenn made the, op the uh, decision to really work on his studies to make a big effort to do something different. And the result, as you're going to hear, is that he passed in July 2018 after more than 20 tries, after more than 14 years. His story is a story both of perseverance, but it's also a story of strategic work step by step uh, without giving up, um, without quitting, without becoming so discouraged that he couldn't go forward. And I think as you listen to Glenn talk, you're going to realize what an extraordinary accomplishment not only it was to pass in an exam when the uh, repeat pass rate, as I say, was 16%. But for people who are over 20 times taking the exam, there are only a handful of those people that ever pass. I've been very fortunate to work with a few of them uh, in my 30-year career. Uh, but these are very special stories. And so I don't want to keep you from it any longer. I want to share with you a really remarkable, very humble, very genuine guy, uh, someone that I'm very proud to call my student and my friend, Glenn Winter. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back to Hanging Out with Successful Bar Exam Students. And today we have a story that I have waited a very long time to tell and a student that I'm just so delighted to introduce to you. Um, welcome to Glenn Winter, uh, newest member of the California Bar. Hi, Glenn. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Doing good. I bet you are doing good. I, I don't even know the good describes this does it no it's really it's hard to describe uh the feeling is is relief um it, it's it, it's just hard to describe but it's a great feeling it's a great, great feeling well you and i know what our audience doesn't so i think we need to just sort of let the cat out of the bag right away when did you first take the california bar exam um first time was 2004 in july okay long time ago. So we are talking about a 14-year odyssey for you. You didn't sit for every administration of the exam, took, took some time off, but do you recall how many no. times you took the test? The, between, between 25 and 24, a lot, yeah. Okay. Just let's say a lot. Okay. So I want to be clear to our audience. You're now looking at somebody who's been through this exam more than 20 times, and you passed in July 2018 when the pass rate for repeat bar takers was 16%, and the repeat pass rate for people that have taken the exam double digits was less than 1%. Good? Good doesn't even begin to get to it, does it? What a journey this has been for you. Uh, it has been. And when I first started, I didn't know what was wrong. I, I graduated from high school with honors. Um, I always excelled in math. I had issues with reading, and I didn't know why. Um, I was diagnosed with amblyopia when I was 12. And I didn't think anything of it. I could have had surgery to correct it, but didn't know. Um, during the process of taking the exam, I never could finish. I would panic. I never could finish the exam. And obviously, that's 
bad. I would get scores, high scores in some essays. I had a 75, had an 80 on a pro um, question once. But then the next question, I would get a 50 because I had a half hour left to complete the question, obviously, because it took me too long to write the question before. Um, that was an issue with me. I didn't know what was causing it. Maybe I was ADHD. I mean, it seems to be going around now. Who knows what? I, I didn't know what it was. So I started looking into it. Um, long story short, I ended up with uh, headaches in the hospital one day. and. They did it like an MRI. I was sent to a, a doctor who questioned me and says, you know, you have amblyopia. I says, yeah, I had it when I was 12. I knew I had this. He says, and somehow the exam came up. It wasn't for me. And he said, he brought it up, you know, what's going on in your life and stuff. And I, I told him I've been taking this exam. And he says, you know, you can get extra time for that. And I said, really? He says, yeah, you have amblyopia. There's a visual um, accommodation. So Lo and behold, I got referred, this is all through my insurance, through to a neuro-ophthalmologist. And the neuro-ophthalmologist said, yes, you should be getting extra time for the exam. And this was in 2014. This was 10 years later. Right. And I would say the last six to about six examinations, six to seven examinations, I've been knocking on the door of this exam because I had the time to finish and right. was able to, that, along with other things we can talk about, got me through. But yeah, I was wasn't I was not able to pass this exam previously. It was not possible. I couldn't finish the exam because I only read with my right eye. If you can see, my left eye is kind of lazy. I have perfect um, depth perception, but no convergence. So my left eye just kind of rags while my right eye reads. So I have prisms in my glasses now that allows me to kind of trick the eyesight. Uh, if I had surgery, um, it would create possible double vision at this age well, when they could have corrected it. So long story short, this is what we did and it and it and it now put it put me in the ball in the ball game where I wasn't before. I wanted to you know provide that information to explain that yeah. um, if if I had taken it so much this many times results, I probably wouldn't have done it because I, you know it, I wasn't gaining anywhere. I discovered that there was that problem I was having. I think it's important to understand that this for you this journey has been about finding various things and then discovering barriers and figuring out how to get past that barrier and moving to the next one and the next one and the next one. And for you, this, this barrier of the physical uh, was a big deal. And when you uh, uncovered that for the exam and started to request accommodations was when we started to see your scores go up. Uh, there was clearly a, a big jump at that point, but it wasn't quite enough. I mean, you said knocking on the door and you came really close a few times in that period of time, but never quite enough. And um, I think a lot of people would probably have given up long before you did. Can you talk a little bit about why you never gave up, why you, you hung in there and continued to work? I think because I know I'm intelligent and I, I'm able, obviously I had high scores, you know, an 80 is a very good score on this exam. I don't even know if it's, you know, so having 75, 80s, in each, each facet of the exam, I got high scores. I would get 75 on a PT. I would get a 75 or 80 on an essay here or there. And um, the multiple choice, I usually perform pretty well on that and pass that. Um, so it was just putting all three facets together. Uh, you know, I, I come from a background where we got my family values education, we're, we're, you know, we, you know, failure is not an option to me. It's just, I don't give up either, but failure is how I believe we learn. And I learned something from each exam, uh, that I use to my benefit the next time. And I think I mentioned to you, I don't know what to do now. I, I, this is success. What do I do? What do I learn from this? But yeah, I was I learning I, along the way. Your success. <laughs> I, I, let's, let's be real here. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I think it's important to share with our audience that you and I worked together for a very long period of time, and th these were there were moments of extraordinary discouragement because you were coming close. Or, but even before that, when it just we just couldn't figure out what was happening, and then it started to break open for you, and, and step by step, little bit by little bit, and you just kept at it. And one of the things I could sort of count on was that if you hadn't passed, you were not going to give up. You were not going to quit. You, you did take some exams off. I think you and I talked about uh, the other day that, uh, you know, there were a few exams where you didn't sit in July because you wanted to have a holiday season that wasn't crazy studying for the bar, right? I didn't want to have the disappointment of seeing yeah. my name not yeah. on the pass list, to be honest yeah. with you. That yeah. was part of it too. Um, and I know a lot of you know, your listeners will, you know, you know what that feels like right now and or in the past. And I, I just, this exam 
I just knew there was a way to crack it. And, and I wasn't going about the right way. And I was thinking this morning about a, a food pyramid and how that's kind of been inverted over the years, how you had milk and meat on the top and now it's inverted. I really think, and you're onto it too with your writing style as well, that there's got to be a different approach. What's out there is not working. And for me, it was practicing the exam. It was actually doing the, not writing essays. I didn't write any essays for this last exam. All I did was I was practicing the, um, looking, looking for the different conflicts and, and you know, you don't, like, you don't like the word issue, but the issues, or what, what, if I was missing something, I would go yeah. back. And I would, instead of spending a day on the subject, I may spend two or three days on the subject, but until I got it. And I think the practice was more important than maybe at the bottom of the pyramid should be memorization. Absolutely. And you, you weren't memorizing. Um, you used photo reading, correct? Yeah, I did. And I believe I've been meditating since I was 14. It's a big, you know, I, I don't do it every day. I try to, but during the exam time, I, it was, it was almost a daily routine for me. And, you know, to get into that mode wasn't hard for me and understanding, I understand the fact that we internal, we actually know everything we see. It's there in the subconscious is drawing it out. And so I did do photo reading for the MBE and for the essays. I was constantly doing that. And I think that's very helpful if they believe that works during the work. I think so. I think it works. Yeah. And one of the questions that you and I had to discover, and we went to Paul Sheely at Learning Strategies, we weren't sure because of your eye condition, we weren't sure whether or not you would be able to photo read. Yeah. Getting the blip page, seeing that that sort of uh, you know soft focus was not something that was really right. necessarily possible. And one of the things we discovered was, yeah, in fact, you could do that even with really effectively one eye doing most of the work. And you had mentioned earlier about with me, it was psychological. And I think getting over this hump, one of the things I did, I don't know if we talked about it, but I, this, the last two times, um, the last three times, actually, I went in with an attitude of, very, I was very confident. I think it's important. This exam is very intimidating. And, um, you know, they'll say one hour remaining, you know, and it's just like, what was that? You know, it's, it's just, it, it breaks your concentration. There's a lot going on in that exam. And you know, to go in there with, oh, please don't test, test corpse. Oh, you turn the page. I don't want to see this. No, I was ready. Like, please give it to me. I want to see this question. You know, I, I think it's important for students to be prepared. If, if you're not, if I wasn't performing on the multiple choice, at least 70% for me, and, and getting, looking at an essay, knowing what to do uh, before going in the exam, then, you know, I wasn't prepared. And I, would, I wouldn't have that confidence. And, and once I got to that point, and I think taking a year, again, everyone's different. This is my story, but if it may relate to other people. I think there's too much information in this exam to just say, okay, you got two months, go for it. You've been doing it for a while. And I, when I took a year off for the July 17 exam, between 16 and 17, is where I made my, is where I really made that move. And I missed it by 0. 0.47 points on the first read. They don't round up. Um, I was told to appeal it. As you know, I did appeal, but um, I tried to let that go and, and, and I was encouraged not to, but I knew I had to because, and I want to express this to also your listeners is we are responsible for our own actions and you're not going to be sitting with us in the exam. I'm only there with my earplugs on and it's, it's our responsibility to correct what's going on with us or what we're not doing right. I was scared to, look at the subjects I was weaker at. I didn't believe that they weren't fun to look at. I hated them. Um, but I had to, I had to like face that, I guess, facing the dark Vader in the, in the, in the cave, yeah. you know, Star Wars, you have to, you have to face, I had to face that. I get strong in these subjects. Um, and it's my responsibility. I can't blame the bar examiners. They're they're. I'm just a number to them. And they wrote a beautiful letter. It's, 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 it's the, when you pass, it's amazing about our ethical responsibility and, um, you know, hopefully you'll do pro bono work. And I mean, it, it, you know, it's not about making money and all that's about giving back. And, and it, it showed me I have a great mission in the bar examiners. I had never had a fight with them. And if I had gone down that road and appealed and gone appeal and appeal, it would have gotten in the way of my goal. Um, I think it, I think that's a really good point that um, there, your approach to this was very positive in spite of, I mean, beyond just giving up, I think most people would have become embittered. Uh, you came incredibly close, didn't make it. Your multi-state score kept going up and up and up and up. Uh, I mean, well over 144. And, you know, it was just like, oh, oh, 
you know, how close are we going to come again? You know, how close? And you just kept this amazing equilibrium that said, you know what? I'm disappointed, but I'm not giving up. I'm going to keep at it. I'm going to keep pushing. What can I, as you said, what can I learn? How can I improve? And so you were constantly looking for improvement in what you were doing. And I probably learned more from you than you learned from me, to be perfectly honest, Glenn. Um, I think that uh, you demonstrated what I think of, if I wanted an attorney to represent me, I want somebody who just won't give up and who is relentlessly looking to improve. I, I mean, that, that is the essence of what a great attorney should be. And we knew, you and I both knew, that you were capable of practicing law. That was never really the issue. The question was, how do we demonstrate that on the exam? And so we worked through a lot of things. We worked through photo reading and meditation. We worked through the writing process. We, we talked about the timing and getting the accommodations and how to make all of that work in a way that, that was meaningful. And, and your family was part of this process as well. I know your wife was totally into this. No, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and one of the things I had mentioned to you, um, you know, she just has a small business and her, and her main employee said to her, Congratu tell Glenn congratulations, but also congratulations to you. <laughs> and, you know, it's so important you know, it's kind of like I'm in denial, and I'm sure other applicants, we really, I don't see how it affects family members. And yeah. I know you have a, a, a video and, a, and, a, and something to the family in your course, and it is important. It's really hard on family and friends. And, you know, yes, they don't know what we're going through, but, you know, it is a very selfish journey, no matter what we, how we put it. And I tried not make it not that way. And I have to say, I didn't put oodles of hours and put you know, four hours a day. I, I don't, I want to stress that it doesn't have to be this, this like uh, a drudgery or something to endure. It, you, you know, you can make it fun. You could do it little bits at a time. There's a lot of material, but at the end of the day, they're only testing a little bit. So it's not everything. And yes, you kind of have to know, I believe it's the practice where I was focusing my time because I have a family, I have a job, I was working, I only took a week off before the exam didn't have a lot of time to sit to, to do that. And I've also gotten feedback from other people that having less time in their life to do this exam is, has been beneficial than having more time of it yeah. and being able to procrastinate. What I did was to improve my score. And, then, and ultimately, that's what I was learning along the way. It's like, how do I, every, when I sit down, am I doing something? I ask myself, is this what I'm doing now? Is this beneficial? Or am I just reading an outline that's not going to have that effect? Of course, you got to look at the outlines and, and know the material. But. Yeah, I think that's absolutely true. And I think, you know, the task expands to fill the time. Um, and you had been through the material so many times that obviously you could get lost in just doing it mindlessly. And you weren't doing that. You were trying to, to work through it pretty uh, for a specific purpose. And that showed up. So I think that's awesome. Well, I, I'm curious. I, I just really want to know what it was like when you got the results when you went on the the computer on friday night i assume friday night you went and looked it was friday okay. um, i it was the day was very stressful i had just moved and um you know we had a lot of chaos at the house and you know it was just like it, it, it was ending on a, a very stressful note so i says you know what what better time to go this <laughs> right than right now and you know I, I thought i had passed but you know i thought i passed last year also so yeah. But I really did thought I passed. So I put my number in. The you put, I guess you put your uh, applicant number and then the file number. I don't know which one's which. And I and I usually reverse them or something. I'm a little dyslexic as well from, from the amblyopias. So I put in the numbers wrong. But at first it, I didn't know that. So I, the first thing I got back was your name didn't appear, uh, which I'm very familiar with. And um, I, I looked and I said, okay, I put the right number on the top. Um, I didn't mix up the applicant number and the file number. But, but I did have two digits, the wrong two digits that were running together on the bottom one. So I said, okay, I'll put that number in, which has happened before. Because, again, I tend to not write the right number down. And then it came up. And, you know, I was expecting something to say, congratulations, you've passed. It doesn't say that. It says your name appears on the pass list. But they had my full name, my middle name. So it was no, and my numbers were there. And, I, and it, it was, you know, I did cry. Um, not as much as I anticipated I would, 
And then I called my wife and you know, I said, you know, I passed. She said, passed what? <laughs> and, she said, and I told her and, and she, she, she lost it. She cried. And, uh, and I called my parents who are both still living. And that was really, um, that was really nice. Not everyone's still around, but, but most people are that, and, and it was very nice. And, and again, I, it, it was, it's surreal. It's still surreal. Um, and everyone's asking me, what do you want to do now? And, you know, I, I you know, I, it's, I'm just enjoying it right now. I'm just yeah. enjoying it. I do, I do know I want to give back. So that's part of what I think that was, what was so nice when the bar sent the letter. It was, you know, yeah, that, this is where we're supposed to, to be yeah we're officers of the court i will be when i'm sworn in but you know there, there's an obligation an ethical obligation we have and and to give back to do pro bono work or to, to give back to the community and that's you know that's what comes to mind i don't yeah. know why but it, it does well you're you're giving back by doing this interview i i will tell you right now that this will be a heavily watched discussion um and uh it, it is Extraordinary accomplishment, Glenn, as you well know. Uh, but I think a lot of people will be looking at this going, oh, how did he do that? And, and the answer is it's nothing magic. It's just hard work. It's perseverance. It's being able to, to look yeah, at it. Say, Where's it, the barrier? How can I work on this? I was told when I went to law school that the dean says, okay, you got to lock yourself in a room. You, you don't, don't have a relationship. If you want to pass this exam, that was day one. And you know, I kind of was in my subconscious that this was like this extraordinary thing that it was so hard. And it's not. It's a test. It, you practice the test. You do the practice questions. You do a lot of them. You do a lot of them. Um, and they repeat it. Now, yes, they don't repeat it always in the same way. You know, when they, they tested um, dormant commerce clause. I, I love that subject. Some people hate it. I love it. I was glad it was there. Um, I, I'm just interested in that. Some other people are interested in something else, but other subjects. But it was basically doing enough of the practice and and when and being able to perform, being confident, being being kind of arrogant only on the exam, not in real life. But because there's certain there's a certain mindset I believe you have to have for this exam. And but it's not it is not as difficult as they make it out. It just takes a certain preparation and everyone's different. I'm different than someone else. Someone else may have to write. Someone else may have to do more MBEs. I, I, what I would stress is find what your strengths are, what makes you learn and do that. And everyone's different. And that's why I think this cookie cutter approach that a lot of the courses have, it doesn't work because everyone's different. You kind of have to, you're always open to that. You're always, always, always open to look in different ways. And I, for, for me, and I'm sure for other students as well, but I want to also thank you for being there for me. Cause what you asked me the question, you know, how did you persevere? It wasn't always family members pushing me, people like you that said, don't give up. My friends yeah. who are also attorneys said, whatever you do, Glenn, don't give up. Those yeah. voices are in my head. You know, that really helped me. And I'll let you know that it really helped. That's great. Well, to say that I'm proud of you really doesn't say it enough. To say that I'm thrilled for you, I'm sure doesn't express the depth of my excitement. Uh, it literally made my day, week, weekend, probably made my year to see you on the pass list. Um, I can't think of anybody that's more deserving than you, that's worked harder for a longer period of time than you have. And I know that many people in our audience today are discouraged and disappointed. The California bar is a beast. It is so incredibly difficult. But folks, I want you to know that it is possible. You can succeed. You don't have to give up. You don't have to quit. You don't have to roll over and say, I can't do it. It can be done. And, and I think, Glenn, you're such an example of that. You know, you, you're not 22 years old. You're not in perfect health. You didn't graduate top of your class at Harvard Law School. I mean, there's, there's a lot of reasons that we would say, this guy would never pass the bar and look at you. You did it. After, after all of those barriers and hurdles, and what a, an outstanding testimony to your character and to your family and your friends and your support. Um, I am really, really honored that we were part of the journey. Um, it's, it's one of the highlights of my professional career, to be perfectly honest. So I think you should enjoy it for a while before you decide what you're going to do. I mean, I, I think you should just enjoy the fact that you don't have to pick up your books and start studying again. I mean, that's got to be such a great feeling, right? Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to get a hobby now. I know. Yeah, find a hobby, <laughs> man. Fishing and like golf more.
No, <laughs> yeah, it's it's going to be nice. But I, I will, also, yeah, I think what you said about the uh, the, your, the students out there, it's it, it's it's doable. It's doable. Um, you know, don't give up. Don't get discouraged. It's a tough exam. Um, there's no, you know, it's it can be done, and uh, it's a fair playing field. It really is, and um, you have just as much a chance as anyone else, anyone else out there taking it, um, and and you can do it. You know, I did it, and I know I know others people can do it. That's awesome. Well, listen, Glenn, thanks so much for being willing to share your story, to be this open and, and transparent. Um, I, I promise you, you will hear from people. <laughs> there will be lots of people that want to. Uh, congratulate you and, and find out more about your story. But um, we wish you all the best. I know that uh, uh, your spirit is one of, of, of a, a generous spirit and you give back. And uh, uh, I hope that uh, we'll continue to see you around and, and supporting our existing students. But um, I want to join everybody on our team and everybody in our course and our students in congratulating you on really a remarkable, extraordinary accomplishment. Um, and we could not be happier for you. Thank so you. thanks for coming on and being with us today. Thank you. Thank you, and thanks to all of our audience. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this one as much as we did. That's all for this week. We'll see you again in our next episode. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Well, that's our episode for today. I I'm not even sure what I can tell you after you've heard that, uh, because Glenn is so remarkable. His story is so amazing. And if you're feeling discouraged, if you're feeling down, if you're feeling angry about the process or the system, if you feel like you just can't do it, I really hope you'll use Glenn's example of what it means to just stay with it and to keep after it. Um, it's such an extraordinary accomplishment and a great thing in his life, and I hope that it's an inspiration for you no matter where you are in your journey. Now, I do want to remind you before we sign off today that we're going to be showing stories like Glenn's and talking about what it takes to be successful by doing something different, making the next bar exam your last bar exam. It's free live training. It comes up on Thursday, November 29th, 7 p.m. Eastern. That's 4 o'clock Pacific time. You do need to register in advance. We're filling up. We've got a big crowd already registered for this training. and You can register on the show notes or by going to celebrationbarreview.com forward slash webinar. Are. Well, thanks everybody for being with us this week. I hope that you enjoyed that interview as much as I did. Uh, we'll be back to you again next week with more great stories and interviews and information as we begin to point towards the 2019 exams now. Hope everybody has a great week and we'll see you along the extra mile and on the pass list. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Extra Mile Podcast for Bar Exam Takers at www.celebrationbarreview.com.